the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Eora tribe, nation, I, sorry, and wish to pay respect to their elders both past and present. So good evening and welcome, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Simon and myself to the 2013 Paddington Art Prize. We're celebrating a decade of Australian landscape painting. The landscape and our relationship with it maintains its physical and spiritual power over us, as it has over the centuries. And these wonderful paintings that you see tonight shine like beacons, I believe, that will lead us into the next decade of artists similarly seduced by the beauty and grandeur of our unique landscape. Sorry. Tonight, before I introduce Simon, who is this year my co-principal sponsor, I need to congratulate and thank a number of people. I'm not going to mention any names as their, their numbers are numerous. However, they will know who they are. I wish to congratulate all of the finalists, many of whom have entered the prize each year since its inception. And to all those artists, who've entered the prize for the previous 10 years, for without the artist's support, there would be no prize. My thanks also to the judges, in particular the judges this year, uh, Del Catherine Barton, who couldn't be with us tonight, Professor Ross Harley, Dean of COFA, who also couldn't be with us tonight, and John Firth-Smith, who is with us tonight and has generously agreed to open the exhibition. Many thanks. Um, I need to thank um, all the previous judges, 30 in all, I, I can't mention them all, but uh, my thanks to them, some of them are here tonight for giving so generously of their time and their expertise. Many thanks to all the volunteers over the years, and in particular, of course, this year, for all their help and, uh, you know, really great support of the prize. So it, it simply wouldn't be possible uh, to do this without all their help. So, I'm also going to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors and the supporters of the Paddington Art Prize now, this year and over the 10 years. Tonight, I, I particularly wish to thank, um, I'll start by thanking the University of New South Wales College of Fine Art uh, for their support for their prize each year that I know all of the artists just love winning their prize, which is an opportunity to create a limited edition print under the tutelage of Michael Kempson. So that's just so great. Um, for Wallara Council, who have already always supported the prize, um, the winning painting is, can be viewed down there uh, for 12 months um, after the show comes down. Um, I, I must thank Tracy Deep uh, for her beautiful floral sculpture that you see by the desk. Tracy has been with the prize from its inception, so thank you so much to Tracy. And this year I need to thank Derek Parker and Lucio for their support in um, uh, giving um, 
vouchers to the honourable mention <laughs> um, are the highly commended. Um, and I know all the artists who receive these prizes uh, are always thrilled and, and happy to be chosen by the judges. <coughs> so I think I've said thank you to everyone. Um, I, have, I have missed out thanking my family and uh, for their support every year, and in particular this year, my daughter Pia um, had not so much in the office with all the office work. So, but I'd like to hand the microphone over to Simon now, who will introduce John Firth Smith. There we are. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Marty. Thank you. I think um, Marlin should be congratulated for starting this art prize 10 years ago. And um, I think she's done a fantastic job. And also, over the last few years, it's been quite tough, as you all know, in the art industry. And um, she did a lot to keep persevering with it. And um, so I think last year, she asked me to help her out. So I was volunteering to, to organize it and give her a hand with a few things. And this year, she rang me up and asked me to help again. So I was quite happy to be a co-principal sponsor for the art prize. I think anything that we can do to help raise the profile of art is good for the industry. And I think we all need to like, you know, have more of these sort of events and raise profile of visual art so that we can lobby the government, both state and federal, so that they can give us more funding yes. instead of cutting funding every time they look to, to cut funds. So, um, but I think art prizes, despite a lot of people don't really like it and I can understand why, um, does raise profile for the art and it is about the artist. So we're very fortunate tonight to have an artist to come and open the show, and he's very dedicated to artists, um, and he's got you know like you know a lot to say about art prizes and, and how we should support artists. So I'd like you all to welcome John Fur Smith. Thank you. Marlene blew into the thing. Anyway. Uh, Congratulations, artists, you're all here, all the people that are hanging. And of course, uh, it's a difficult thing, this art prize thing, because I remember way back in the early 60s, you go to the Art Gallery of New South Wales, and they would have a Romeo sheet of all the art prizes in New South Wales that you could enter. And there were probably about 10 prizes on the list, you know, from Gallard and Bone uh, traditional and, uh, you know, the Wollongong traditional prize and whatever, and you'd enter some of these things, and it was a nightmare to the prize then. And I've entered prizes over the last, I don't know, not recently, not the last 20 years, but you know, it was a, a way of getting your work seen and shown, you know. And it's a very important thing when you, you're unknown and you're a young artist to get your work out there. And if you win the prize, it's fantastic. Often you're rejected, and I've been rejected many times. And I think about these people here. There's something like 750 artists into this prize. It's a lot of artists. It's fantastic that they're out there working. I mean, you know, and all the people that are here, it's even more fantastic because you're on show, and somebody's won, and people have, you know, and it's a wonderful thing. The strange activity painting where you're in a room on your own with your materials and you're trying to make something of significance, which is always a difficult thing. And not only significant to yourself, but significant to others. And other people might respond to it and actually get something out of the work. And so it's not an easy thing. And it's a neurotic activity for me. I mean, I don't find it enjoyable. I mean, it's, you know, it's an obsessive but neurotic activity. <laughs> and, there I am, on my own, in my studio, sort of pacing around, sort of wondering what the hell it all means and whether the paintings have any value or worth to any way, anybody other than myself. And basically you aim high, I think. You aim high, you aim, you think of art, and you think of what you possibly can achieve and the people who have achieved things and the history of art and so on. And so it's not a difficult, it's, it is a difficult thing to actually uh, Almost said, not a difficult thing, it's a bloody difficult thing. Anyway, I'm congratulating everyone here and the winners and so on. And being, uh, but getting back to that private activity, 
uh, and a show like this, which is made up of so many sort of quite diverse and different works, often works that are a bit quieter or take longer to discover as a viewer somehow miss out, and other ones that jump off the wall sometimes, um, you know, miss out because they're too sudden or something or whatever. So there's a, it's a difficult thing being a judge. I don't think any artist likes being a judge of other artists' work. And the process of choosing the 700 is difficult because of the internet and the transparencies and the images and things that you see are not the tactile qualities of the real work, you know. And being quite a tactile painter myself, I like to be able to physically see the work. Anyway, I think everyone took this judging very seriously. We went around and looked at every painting many times. We all had our uh, thoughts on every one of them. And uh, the prize winners ended up who they were, you know. So that's how it went. Anyway, thank you for uh, listening to me. And, uh, you know, good luck with all you artists out there. Marvin's going to be back to uh, announce the winners, so uh, if you can just bear with us for a second. Uh, there she is. Simon and I wish to uh, wish you well with this bottle of bread champagne. Well, thank you so much for generously opening the exhibition tonight. And a neurotic, a, a, a neurotic time. But anyway, there's <laughs> art in this bottle too. Art in the bottle. It's, not a, it's a nice colour as well. Yes. I mean, I can talk about art. Enjoy the picture of the bottle. Thank you. Enjoy the picture of the bottle. Thank you, John. Thank you. I mean, you need these people that actually sort of put the money up for this. I mean, it's, uh, the other thing, too, I must say, is in 1961, or around that time, when you did get that sheet of paper from the art gallery, there are only two art galleries in Sydney, the song, and there were probably half a dozen artists, and uh, the art world has blossomed. The art world's huge now. I mean, I, you know, I've lost track of it almost. I don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. Way back then, it was a very different situation. And uh, it was like that with everything else in Australia. I mean, Sydney, if you went along, there were no delicatessens. You couldn't buy a good cappuccino or a coffee anywhere. You know, there were no, hardly any restaurants. I don't know if some people of my age would remember that. But Sydney, since 19, say, 1960 till now, that 40... 50 years, I mean, what a change, what a change. People have travelled, people have brought back their ideas from travelling, people have evolved, we've become aware of the country a lot more, we're aware of the landscape. And this is a landscape prior, I didn't mention that. And the landscape is interesting because when I came in here tonight, I saw that one over there in the bush, and I've just come back, I'm living in the bush at the moment, and I thought, well, I've been driving through this bush country, and then the one down on the ground is like the city in the distance in the afternoon by the time I get to Sydney. And then when I get to where I have a studio in Sydney, it's all that rubbish on the side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the thing is, what you read into painting, if I get out of painting, is something that you've got to immerse yourself in the art. Okay. I could talk for hours, but I won't say any more. <laughs> Thank you so much, John. So, the winner of the $20,000 Paddington Art Prize for 2013, celebrating a decade of Australian landscape painting, the prize goes to Tim Johnson. Tim Johnson. Wow. Oh. Simon and Marlene, um, it's quite humbling to 
win. And um, I'm trying to think of something to say after what John said. There's not much I can say because he gave a great speech. But I thought of one thing. I was at uh, in Mossman at the art prize there, and I actually won. And they let me know beforehand. And I was standing behind Ken Doan, who you probably heard of. And uh, they announced the winner, and I sort of shrunk a little bit, because it's a little bit embarrassing to win something. And Ken Doan turned around and he said, you knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you very much.